Hi, my name is Franz, and this is Photo App, a show about photography, its history, technique, and gadgets. This week on Photo App, what does the future of photography look like? We discuss technology and how photography is changing. We talk about how movie makers are using old camera lenses in films. A look at this week's top selection of photos from Photo Nation International. And we listen to Archie Rosales, a mobile photographer from Cebu City, who shares his passion for mobile photography. This is a dark room. Many dark rooms all over the world have been shut down, but this is one of the few remaining dark rooms left in the Philippines. One of the biggest reasons for this shift is that digital technology has taken over the process through applications like Adobe Photoshop and Adobe Lightroom. In this episode, we discuss the future of photography. Photography in itself is a great technological marvel that changes through time. From its advent in the late 1800s, technology has driven the evolution of the art. What does the future have in store for us? The answer is immersiveness. With the pandemic, photographers shifted to a more personal approach. They built home studios, enriched their knowledge by attending online photography workshops, and created their own online social presence. Shifting gears required all of us to become digital adopters, whether we like it or not. Like other professions, the pandemic pushed photographers deeper into the internet. Data Reportal says 4.72 billion people around the world used the internet in April 2021. That's more than 60% of the world's total population. But one of the biggest disconnects in the online world is that only two out of five senses are used. The other senses are automatically discarded. But technology may yet connect us to a virtual world with all five senses. Thus, there's buzz on the next big thing, immersive photography. Apps like Spark AR, an augmented reality tool from Facebook, allows anyone to create their own AR effects and add these to photos or videos. We may soon be able to see and interact with photo exhibits rather than simply seeing them. 360-degree cameras are also on the rise. Imagine preserving a whole scene in 360-degree perspective. Imagine immersing yourself in the scene rather than seeing it from the outside. 360 technology has been around for a while, but it's more accessible now. Aside from AR and 360, there's VR or virtual reality. Devices from Oculus now allow everyone to work without computers anywhere on the go. Imagine a virtual post-processing studio and collaboration tool wearable on your head. These are just some of the awesome tech that is changing how we produce and consume photography. Have you seen Army of the Dead by Zack Snyder or Stanley Kubrick's Barry Lyndon? Both movies use photographic lenses to create those dreamlike shallow depth of field sequences. These lenses produce those creative shapes in the background, or what photographers call bokeh. A little background. Cinematic lenses are different from photographic lenses. The build is different. Cinema lenses are designed to meet specific demands of filmmaking. But cinematographers' immersive photography know there's a certain look that only a photographic lens can deliver. It began as far back as the mid-70s with filmmakers like Stanley Kubrick. Considered as one of the greatest filmmakers, Kubrick funneled his background in photography to give his films a unique look. In one of his most iconic films, Barry Lyndon, Kubrick used a Carl Zeiss 50 f 0.7 lens that was formerly used by NASA's Apollo lunar programs. The lens was used to take pictures of the dark side of the moon. The lens made it possible to achieve a realistic look typical of the 18th century, with the scene shot almost entirely with natural light and by candlelight. Fast forward to our time. We have Zack Snyder's movie, Army of the Dead, using a dream lens from a 1960s Canon rangefinder. Specifically, it's the Canon 50 0.95 dream lens, which was described as the heart and soul of the set. 
the lens gave his shots those creamy and crazy bokeh or shallow depot feel, giving the film a dreamlike look and feel. Snyder calls the cinematography a weird combination of super high tech and super low tech, referring to the 60s Canon dance and the state of the art red Komodo camera he used. What scenes from these movies are your favorite? Tell us in the comments below. Here are some of the photos we found from Photonation International. Let's take a look at some of the images that captivated us. This week, we'll feature photos taken using a mobile phone. Don't forget to tune in to the next episode and your photo might just be the next featured one we'll talk about. Photography is not defined by the type of camera or device that you use, but many mobile photo enthusiasts find that among photographers, mobile photography is not seen as real photography. But with the advent of powerful tiny cameras on iOS and Android phones, these pocket gadgets can give their big DSLR counterparts some competition. Let's listen to RC Rosales a shutterbug from Cebu City, whose gadget of choice is the mobile phone. Pinaka memorable na experience ko as a mobile photographer, yung ano na bash ako ng for national, kasi nga daw kinwestiyon niya bakit daw mobile phone yung gamit ko and bakit daw tinotolerate ng ibang tao na yung yung cellphone counts as, as ano photography. I posted a work sa Facebook. Then he came to the comment section asking why why cell phones count as cameras basically, so, and I felt kind of alarmed. Thinking ko mobile phone should count as a camera, and mobile photography is photography. Technically speaking, your phone is enough as a camera. Ang pinaka favorite aspect ko ng mobile photography is the fact na it's there. <laughs> Nasa bulsa ko lang. It's always with me. I also don't need to um, have a complicated ano setup and storage process. Whereas with ano halimbawa mga mga DSLR, yung settings ng ano yung sa lighting, yung sa exposure. I check ko pa ganun. Tapos yung storage dapat it has to be in a certain bag or else mabasa. Whereas with the with the mobile phone, bulsa mo lang, that's enough. Yung pinaka noticeable limitation ng mobile photography is yung yung pag-isolate ng subject tapos yung background magiging blurry ganun or bokeh as we as we know it. Ang pagboboke ng subject sa mobile photography may kahirapan kaunti. Sa macro din, ano may ibang may ibang phones na hindi hindi masyadong kagandahan yung macro output nila. Kaya buti na lang na may mga attachable lenses na nakiklip naman sa ano sa phone. May weakness yung mobile photography sure pero unti-unti those weaknesses are addressed whether through the hardware ng phone or through clip-on lenses and probably even even new techniques na na-employ. Mobile photography is compassionate. It's very affordable. So you can save a lot. Sa ngayon pa lang, marami ng mga mobile photographers popping up and they are getting better every day i think one way to break the discrimination is to create good output create excellent output with what you have don't be afraid all it takes is curiosity lang. and that was photo app join us again next time for photography tips news and meet photographers my name is france thank you for watching